Maybe you should start because I see a lot of faces which are different a bit in age. Who is here a student and who can I see his hands? Oh, okay, okay, still the majority. And who is a supporter of students? Okay, that's all. Oh, well, welcome all, welcome all to uh, to the student challenge. And maybe it's good before. Well, I have a few uh, notes or a few remarks, but maybe what is the reason, in fact, uh, to um, to participate in the challenge? Are you participating in the challenge? Yes. And why are, yeah, can you, huh? is, is it the, no, it's just a regular, oh, the regular. Part. it's my part, <laughs> why are you uh, participating? Well, because I am very passionate about the well-being of the planet and how we treat it, and I think that when it comes to protein and food systems, there is a big relationship correlation between okay. the state of our planet. And how big is your team? How big? Five. Okay, quite good. And another, maybe let's go to another suit. Um, you are a suit as well? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you participating? Yeah. Um, I'm participating because I think um, it's mostly for myself because I see it as a challenge and I'm very eager to learn what other ideas other students have. Um, so that's why I'm participating. And how big is your team? It's just me. <laughs> one band, one ladies' band. Okay. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Okay, well, uh, well, maybe, of course, everybody has his own reason for being here. Um, and that's also why we as Wagen organized the, the ch uh, student challenge. And why are we doing that? Actually, there are two reasons. First of all, we have a, well, an education reason and also a content-wise topic reason. First of all, the education reason. Last year, uh, oh, well, we uh, have a so-called vision for education. It was, uh, well, it's a strategic <coughs> plan. And what the idea behind it is that we should uh, learn students in a other way, a so-called rich learning environment, as the slogan, slogan or motto for the future, it means that we want to offer our students, uh, let's say, a more, I would say, more rich learning environment, and it includes also offering different aspects. And one of the aspects is to offer a student challenge. And the student challenge is interesting because actually it's the only course in Wageningen where you are really behind the driving uh, wheel. You are in charge of your own uh, learning process. And that's challenging, it's also difficult for us because normally as teachers we try to control things, but we're not doing that. Uh, now, and, and, and last year <coughs> we had a similar challenge and it's really um, uh, interesting to see what comes out. And I was really, I say, amazed that you were also there, Marta, uh, about the enthusiasm and also the br br brilliant ideas of a lot of students. That's the first reason. The other reason is that we recently, this year, 
uh, just a couple of months ago, the new strategic plan of the Wageningen University was launched, called Finding Answers Together. And uh, in this plan, uh, three topics were identified as uh, attention points which should be addressed by the whole organization, or at least what they call investment teams, and we want to do more. Well, one is uh, uh, circularity, which is common. The second one is the protein transition. Uh, well, and that's also a reason why uh, this year the uh, shooting challenge is on rethink protein. So there are content-wide reason and also there's an, uh, uh, an education reason. Uh, what I what I want to say is that uh, you probably you are you are now fresh. Yeah? You still you start now. You have brilliant. This is nice. We have a nice lunch, but you will also face I would say um, sad moments, uh, moments of despair, uh, maybe moments where you say well. Uh, I'm, it's better to give up, uh, but that's also a very good learning moment because if I reflect back on my own education experience, probably I learned most when I was, well, it was a complete failure. So we also take your failures as a point for uh, success. But also there are things where you say, you really come up with ideas that gives you energy and gives you motivation. And that's something we, uh, well, uh, we, I, you should cherish these moments yeah, because they're really uh, very uh, educationful and uh, worthwhile. Also, we start now with, <coughs> I thought 45, but matter how many teams? 56. 56 teams. And uh, where are they all come from? Can you say something about it? Well, we don't know. <laughs> we know that there, is, there are a couple of teams from UC Berkeley, and there is a, a team from China University of Agriculture. We have seen also some German teams, uh, some Italian teams, but we don't know, are, are those people who actually study in Wageningen or? do they actually are at this moment in uh, Italy. So uh, we want to also figure out. <laughs> okay, but we'll not do that now, we'll no. do that later. <laughs> yes. So in, in uh, 40, uh, 56 teams, that's, uh, that's a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, um, I want to want wish you all, and especially uh, the students, especially a lot of success, a lot of inspiration, a lot of um, uh, uh, nice period in the participating in the challenge. And I also want to thank well, all the supporters, because there are many people here who are not really participating in the challenge, but they are participating actively, they are participating in a kind of reflection mode. And I want to thank you for your uh, support already now, for being here, for your uh, enthusiasm for this challenge, and hopefully you also benefit from it as well. And with this, I give the floor back to thank you. you. Yeah, yes? thank you very much. Today we have a, a very tight program, so first of all Marta is going to tell you a little bit about the more so that you know what to expect as a student, but also as a partner company. Uh, afterwards, uh, Jeroen Willemse from the Protein Cluster will give you a master class about turning a serious business into serious business. Uh, and Jan Rademaker from Topstaff will also tell you a little bit about the business model canvas. It can also be interesting for the partners of course, and then the most important part is the meet and greet where you will get face to face with all the companies, they introduce you to them, uh, and you will introduce them to, to, uh, to yourself as well. So, um, yeah, that's a tight program, uh, we're going through it, and I hope at the end of the day everybody knows each other a little bit better. Yeah, so Marta, go ahead. So, I would like to say hello also to uh, the teams that are not here, but yeah. maybe they are watching us online, because this entire program is being live streamed. So also, if you have some friends who couldn't be here, you can uh, uh, tell them that uh, they can watch it back online. Yeah. 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 Um, yes, so uh, I'm here on behalf of Student Challenges, the organizer of the challenge. Um, and this is the team who is behind it. Uh, Stacy Pilot is here as well. Rio Paz, uh, unfortunately, is now in China, preparing the second, the other challenge that we start in October. Uh, Adrian from the club couldn't be here as well. Inona is supporting us uh, on communication. Rick is also here. That's me. We, the, the team is much bigger than this. This is, this is like the team who is really getting their hands dirty. But for instance, <laughs> Arnold is uh, in our think tank, a person who is uh, like, like, uh, giving us a lot of advice. Um, so you might come across all those people um, throughout the challenge, so let me know the thanks. Um, <laughs> I have to refer for everybody, for all the teams who are here, this. It's like a small book that you can take home. 
and uh, I'm, I'm going to give you a very short uh, uh, tour through the handbook right now, but please study it carefully, it will be also on, a, uh, on the dashboard, so we can uh, look at it back. So we are starting this uh, challenge, it's about coming up with the innovative business ideas for new uh, sources, uh, products, uh, technologies, uh, consumer behavior uh, uh, intervention related to the sustainable products. Um, I think it's very uh, important to remember the four criteria. So it's, it's something that you should like to learn and <laughs> remember for the next three months. Uh, your, uh, your submissions will be scored on technical feasibility and on environmental sustainability as well as social impact and of course on economic viability. And all the coaches that are here today they can also give you advice on this. So please use them as much as possible and some of them maybe have more knowledge on technical aspects, other on social uh, impact. <coughs> so be smart about how and who you approach. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a very short overview of what is going to happen in the next three months. So we go through three different stages. <coughs> Today we start with the kickoff, and it's, you, you have now three weeks, more or less, to develop your value proposition. And uh, Jan Rademacher is going to help you, give you a little bit of a hint uh, in a couple of minutes about how to do it, uh, and what <coughs> you have to do by the end of this moment, of this, of this stage, is actually uh, improve or elaborate on your, on your program. So everybody here has already an online <coughs> program, and use the lessons that you will learn in the next three weeks to improve on it. And, um, and like then 30 plus best things will go to the next stage. Um, and uh, we say it starts on 30th of April. I hope it's already in your agenda. It's a speed date day. And uh, this is a moment when you can actually get more feedback from the coaches, like really have an online um, live sessions with them. Uh, and there will be also a, a second workshop that will help you to work with a business model canvas. And then 20 best teams go to the finals and on 27th of June is the uh, grand finale. So I hope that, that at least those three dates are already in your agenda. Um, uh, more about actually what happens in every stage you can hand, uh, find back in the, in the handbook. And one thing I would like to really can make you think, yeah, like make you uh, think about is the pitfalls. So we know that uh, you know, like when you start, you're very uh, inspired and maybe idealistic, and you have a lot of ambitions. And then, in the handbook, we have described a number of pitfalls that uh, starting entrepreneurs are easy to fall into. So have a look at what we wrote here. Think about it. Try to be. Let's uh, try to uh, outsmart those people. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, I, uh, I have told you who is behind uh, the challenge, so I introduce you the team. So if you email uh, Rethink or uh, or WhatsApp, I think there's also an online uh, WhatsApp number on the website, then one of us will do our <coughs> to help you. And our social media for student challenges is a place where you can find all the updates, events, because we, we do much more than, uh, than the events that are listed here. So there are also uh, useful resources, nice uh, article to check it out. Yes, so <coughs> I wish you good luck yeah. and I give floor back to Rick. Thank you very much. Uh, Teams, come and pick these up later uh, at the end. Uh, quite important. Um, so yeah, so there is one little thing I uh, want to mention as well. Uh, in total, already 145 chats have been started. So there has already been some decent contact between the coaches and between the project. Today is the day to elaborate on those chats, uh, and already 1,090 votes have been cast to the project. So that's already a lot. Uh, and I want to give a uh, quick overview of who is on top at the moment. So Scott, I don't know if they are here at the moment. Yeah, they are, they're in the back, I see. Yeah, very, very good. So give them a big round of applause. So at the moment they have uh, collected the most votes towards the audience prize, uh, but there's plenty of time to collect more votes uh, to all the other teams. So don't be discouraged. 
All right, so uh, for me, my personal advice is please stand out, uh, be different, and that sometimes means that you have to be outside your comfort zone where the magic happens. But I think uh, that's why we're all here in this room, to, to do that. Uh, so now uh, we're going to start with the first uh, part of the program, where Jeroen uh, the protein cluster will give us a beautiful mask. Jeroen, I would like to give the floor to you. Thank you. <coughs> Well, if it's, if it's, can everybody hear me like this? I think so, yeah? Is it okay for the live stream as well? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Okay. What a great audience. First of all, my compliments to you, Rick, Martin, and the other of the, others of the organizing team, to make this happen and to challenge you, young people, to rethink protein. I think it's, it's really an amazing effort that you've already put in and that you have, have uh, motivated 56, 56 teams of students to give their view of how we can rethink the protein system. And, what I, and, and of course also a special welcome to, to, the, to, the, to the companies. What, what was the, the slogan again? Finding answers together. Well, I think this yes. is a great example. Together, young and established students, companies, together we can indeed change the protein game. And from here, that's what we're going to do. We're going to change the protein game. It is already changes, changing. Uh, <laughs> signs all over. Uh, I'm not going to disturb you with those signs. What I would like to do in the next 45 minutes, the first 25 minutes, I would like to give you an insight in what I, I have experienced over the past 12 years um, in my journey of rethinking protein. And uh, until the day of today, I am rethinking this whole theme. I'm learning every day, so I'm curious what I'm going to learn today. And I hope that I can inspire you on what I have encountered over the past 12 years, also as a green protein entrepreneur. And perhaps it helps you to sharpen your focus with respect to your proposition. Uh, perhaps it will leave you with some more questions, but that's also okay. And you will find the answers to the questions given all the the magnitude of the people power the protein people power which we have here so please enjoy for the first 25 minutes i will i will be talking and then <coughs> the remaining part 20 minutes or so i would like to have an interaction with you especially the young people here so let's see if this works <laughs> I had a quick glance to all overall the, the 56 applicants, and I was happily surprised with with the diversity of uh, all the, the the challenges and the, and the topics and the concepts. Um, the power uh, of the, one of the key success elements in rechanging the protein system is versatility. We we need you all. We need all your concepts. We need all your thinking power. We need all your your motivation. So I was happily also surprised with that. So the title of my presentation, Turning a Serious Business into Serious Business. Uh, immediately revealing that I also appreciate the, you may say, also the commercial edge. I think we, we also need more products, concepts, that are not just sold because a retailer thinks it's good because of their sustainability program, but also because actually the products are sold. Yeah, so, uh, very important uh, success element which I've encountered myself, so I'll come back to that later on. So, this is me. Oh. Two weeks ago, two weeks ago, I, uh, I ran a, a, a personal record on the 10 kilometer, uh, 36 minutes and one second. And, um, um, and, and I need, just as you, I need a lot of proteins. So I'm, I'm not so skinny because I'm under over malnutrition. <laughs> I, I train some 70, 80 kilometers a week, and uh, I'm, I'm a well. If if I want to reach something, I will reach it. That that's my that's my motto. Uh, uh, also while running, but I show this picture also because 
proteins are not just relevant for me, but for all of us, but especially for me, proteins are crucial building blocks, crucial for my muscles to, to recover after, after such an exercise or such a performance. And I'm a hardcore flexitarian, which means that the majority of my proteins <coughs> I get from plant, plant proteins, and still, to some extent, I get some of my proteins also from animal sources. Quark, for example, I eat quite some quark. Uh, and, um, and every once in a while um, um, we, we eat some meat at home, some animal meat. At home we eat animal meat or plant meat. And sometimes we eat animal meat, uh, just a, uh, um, a chicken, almost, uh, almost every time chicken. Um, the, the, I, I was born in, in, in 72. Um, and the reason I show this picture is that um, over the past 70 years we've created this this meat mountain, so to say, or this, this dairy depth. And, and the, the ratio of proteins that we get from, from, uh, from animal sources and from plant sources has shifted from, let's say, 50-50, uh, the ratio of proteins in, in our diet. You want to have, have an urgent question? Yeah, is this in the Netherlands or is this uh, presented in the world? This is, uh, this is for Europe, basically. Europe. But it also, also holds for, for, for Netherlands, yes. But what you see, what I want to show here, and if you want to have the exact numbers, please look at the protein puzzle, <laughs> very nice, nice report. But I want to show here that when, when I was born, I, and I was raised with a lot of meat and a lot of dairy and a lot of cheese. We built this meat mountain because we thought that eating a lot of meat and dairy was a sign of luxury and welfare and health. But now that we're standing on top of that meat mountain, we can see a little bit further and we see, in fact, that the opposite is true. It is not so sustainable, it's not so healthy, and it's not so good. But how difficult is it, not just for me, but for many of us, to come down off of that meat mountain? It's very difficult. It's quite difficult. It's, it's, the best thing is, in fact, to... Uh, where is my, where's my bag? I don't know if I can find it. The best thing is, of course, if we, uh, if we, if we, if we again eat more more pulses, just eat more pulses as, as a plant protein source or, or, or mushrooms for that, for that matter. But for many people, that's too big a leap. So that's one of the reasons that um, I, I did what I did. I'll come back to that later. But in fact, it's my personal challenge to actually make up within 10, 15 years of what we have created this imbalance over the past 60 years. What we, what we see here, this is a number of, of people and populations uh, spread it over various regions in the world. And you see the, the amount of protein that we consume per day. The green is, is, is plant protein and red is animal <coughs> protein. What you see here is basically two things. First of all, you see that many of us in the world, we eat too many proteins. This is the average daily protein requirement. We eat too, too much protein. And the other thing is that you see is there's a, there's a, a no person imbalance. This is, for example, in, 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 in Europe, we typically consume 40% of our protein from plants and 60% 60, 60 from meat. And this picture shows for me the, the two elements of what we call the protein transition. Because, in fact, the protein transition here in the Netherlands, but in many Western countries, it's already happened. We're all, we're, we're all talking about the protein transition of something of the future, but it's in fact something of the past. <coughs> Over the past 60 years, we have experienced the protein transition. Because we went from a sust more sustainable and healthy balance to a total, total um, unsustainable and unhealthy balance. So in fact, for this part of the world, it's not protein transition, it's protein rebalancing. We want to get back to a more sustainable and healthy balance. But in other parts of the world, where plant protein is still the reference, we all know that it's going to change. And there we have to prevent the protein <coughs> transition as it has encountered in Western Europe. <laughs> and I've seen already that some of the propositions that you have created are more about this, restoring, the protein balance, and some of you are aiming. Let's let's prevent 
that something that we have encountered here in the Western world is also going to happen in those parts of the world where protein demand will rise and also the, uh, the quest demand for, for an animal protein will also, also rise. So I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of a healthy, a healthy, ra healthy ratio. What is a healthy ratio? I would say approximately this, 70, 30, 20, 80. I think that's, and uh, also scientists from Wageningen also confirm that that's, that's, that's a healthy and sustainable ratio, ratio. But it's so difficult to jump off that meat mountain. And why? Because many of us, we love our meat. The knisbury sound when it, when it makes when, when you bake your, uh, those of us who are non vegetarian. <laughs> By the way, I learned a very important lesson uh, some years ago. Uh, somebody so, told me when I interviewed uh, a vegetarian woman, she said to me, Jeroen, I did not turn a vegetarian because I didn't like meat. I did not turn a vegetarian because I didn't like meat. So, so, so taste and texture and the sound and the smell, it's all, well, very deeply. Is a, uh, placed in, in our brain and that's also why I think that we need also transition products some call them meat substitutes or analogs I call them meat successors or meat successors I think it's the next thing in meat plant meat but anyway we love we love our meat so it's very it's very difficult to uh, to say to people okay just get rid of it what is very important is that you start with your consumer insight. What is your consumer insight that you're, that you're aiming for and that you want to give a solution to? I also saw in the, in the, over, in the overview, you, you started with what's the problem? What's the problem and how are you going to solve it? And this is, this is, the, uh, this is the, the outcome of a survey from ING Bank uh, last year. They interviewed 13,000 Europeans and they asked, what would you miss the most if you would cut down on animal products? And on one there's cheese, and on second there's chicken. Well, about 10 years ago, when I worked 200 meters over there at Food and Bio-Based Research, I already had the feeling that if we would like to make it more easy for people to eat again more plant proteins, that, that there could be something with chicken. Because I really also like chicken, I still like chicken. This, very, this report, by the way, you can, you can download it online. There's, Interesting insights for, for all of you, I think. But let's move on to the chicken. Then I said, okay, what would be the... I, I, I tried to visualize the person that I would, I would like to, 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 um, to help, to assist in going towards a more sustainable um, diet. <coughs> so I visualized her as a, as a woman in the early 30s, um, uh, leading a modern, a modern life, and perhaps we could help her also becoming more uh, plant-based again. By the way, does anybody recognize this person? <laughs> Thank you, Faith. This is, this is Isabel Boerdam, by the way, yeah. So I didn't really visualize her 12 years ago, but this is a very fascinating <coughs> woman. She started the, the week without meat, and it was two weeks ago. And, uh, but I think she's also, so she's in that respect atypical because she's already a vegetarian, but I thought she was also quite typical for the, the group of consumers that I really wanted to, to help uh, also at least 12 years ago when I started something new. And, uh, because 12 years ago there, there were some meat successors, but many of the products available didn't really reach out to the consumer needs. Um, so uh, you, you can imagine that, that we really needed also some other products, some more more versatility in, in the in the retail supermarket in the supermarket for us to, to play around with it, with and to create new recipes <coughs> with ingredients that we're used to and how that we're used to also with respect to how we're going to prepare them. And uh, in fact, this is a picture of me um, at at the University of at, at Food and Biobased Research for about uh, I think this one was taken. Uh, uh, 20 years ago or something, and um, I really enjoyed uh, creating new processes, new products, but I also was somewhat frustrated because um, many of the very innovative processes and products that we, that we uh, created didn't reach the market as fast as I wanted to. So the, the impact factor was, uh, for me, not enough. 
and uh, I, I'm, I'm an impatient uh, man, uh, so uh, it also it, it, it got me thinking. And here you see me smiling because this was a few years later, a few hairs later, and then <laughs> and, and, and her less. Her, and, and, but I was I was very happy because this 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 was the the first batch of lupin protein, lupin concentrate protein. I have to say that uh, was sold or was leaving the factory somewhere here in the Netherlands, and the process was uh, created here in Wageningen. It was one of the few examples that we were, I, I was so happy with actors. Yeah, okay, no, something is leaving the factory. We are now really <laughs> changing, uh, or changing the way that we help industry and thereby also consumers of what they can do with plant proteins. And um, but it also encouraged me to make a total change because I wanted to make chicken pieces. Doesn't it look nice? What if I told you that this is 100% plant-based? What if I told you that this product was created together with some other parties 200 meters away from the location where we are now? Back in 2008. And, um, and we, we, we then, we, I, together with, with some other uh, former colleagues, we, we thought, we made a crucial decision because we said we were, we're not going to, to, to sell the knowledge but we're going to try to do it ourselves, to bring this to the market ourselves and let's see what, what happens. And then I met this man. He heard one way or another that we had created vegetarian chick. This is Jaap, Jaap Kortelech. Some of you may know him as the vegetarian butcher. When he first, when he first came to me, he said, he said I'm, I'm Jaap, and I'm, a veg, I'm the, the first vegetarian butcher. And I said, oh, that's interesting, a butcher with vegetarian. No, no, no. Said, no. I'm going to be the, first world, the world's first butcher to sell only vegetarian meat. But I have an idea, he said, but I don't have a product. So well, perhaps, perhaps I can be of help. And this is the first moment that I rethought protein, because there were many marketeers who said to me when they <laughs> tasted this vegetarian chicken, they said, "You don't, you have to create your own brand. This is such a unique product. Create your own brand. There's nothing like this." And then I met Jaap and some other people, and, and knowing myself, and then I made a first big change, and I said, "No." I'm not going to create a brand. I will try to enable as many others who have a plant-based dream and the power to reach out to specific target groups, I'm going to help them to realize their dream. So knowing your place in the whole system of change, I think is very important, knowing, knowing yourself. I'll come back to that later as well. But that was quite a crucial decision that I made. So we started this this company called Oja, and, uh, and, and here we are, because yeah, he, he, tasted, he tasted the product, <coughs> and he said, Jeroen, give me, what did he say, 20,000 kilograms, so I can start my first vegetarian butcher, and we said, okay, <coughs> you'll get it, you'll get it, but then the whole journey started, because we, we didn't have a production facility, we didn't have money. But we said we, we did it, and, and again, rethinking protein, rethinking what you yourself can do, it. and we, we managed to find, a, to find a location where we could scale up our process to do food grade production, to show that we could deliver large quantities of vegetarian chicken. And um, these were, well, we, we, we spent uh, quite some nights over there to get, it, to, to, get it, to get it done, but we got the job done. And uh, Jan could open his, uh, his, 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 his first uh, pilot store in, in, in The Hague. And then, and then something else happened, because we, we, this, this was not our own, uh, our, own, our own factory. But we wanted to have our own factory. But for that, I needed a few million <coughs> euros. And that turned out to be not so easy. Especially not 10, 10 12 years ago. 
Because every investor and bank that I knocked on the door, they said, well, meat substitutes? Who wants to invest in meat substitutes? It's, it's this, and even if it's doubled, it's, it's, it's still this. And isn't that something for the big companies? This, it, it, was, it was seen as a very big risk um, <laughs> to invest in that. But, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 uh, I maintain my, my, my motivation and uh, they also tasted our products and at the end this man, I, this man is Kurat, Shurat and, and, and I, know, I remember well the first time I called him he said how the hell did you get my number? I got his cell phone number <laughs> my, my, how did you get, uh, so I explained and okay he, he, first he heard my one minute pitch very important for you want to <laughs> okay 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 I, I think you're uh, you have the guts to, to call me and uh, to do your pitch come and uh, come over and then well to make a long story short again he's very proud that, that he also was a, a this is in Dutch sorry but he says he sees opportunities in the Dutch food sector and he's very proud that he was an early investor in, in oh yeah and I think also the investment <coughs> climate in the Netherlands but also worldwide has very much changed so I'm quite quite we're confident that the best of you will also find um, some, some capital if, if needed. But it was quite a trip back then. And I, was, I also had to rethink our, our whole way of thinking. Because it's very easy to, to build a business plan saying, okay, this is, the, this is the meat market. And if we only would get 1% of the meat market, then we would be rich. That's, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's one of the pitfalls. Because that's, that's the easy way of, uh, of course, saying that... that it's easy somehow to 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 get a very uh, um, good business case, but please don't don't forget what what you already have, and what we already have is of course also the vegetarian market, which is at that time as well was 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 quite steady, uh, and that's better a, a reference <coughs> than the meat market for our particular case. And then what I also did is I created a <coughs> branch organization. Because uh, I thought that it would be better if we would all team up, producers of meat successors uh, and of other uh, plant-based uh, ingredients, um, if we could team up. And uh, I, I was young, people didn't know me, young as an entrepreneur, I wasn't a danger. So they let me or organize and create also this branch frame thing called Het Planet, in Dutch, Het Platform Nieuwe Eigen. Um, but Planet also obviously uh, related to, to what, what we're doing this for and uh, and it it, it it brought me in contact with all my uh, competitors you could say uh, I got to know them uh, I knew what what they were doing of course they got to learn what I was doing but I got a quick insight in this whole world this world this 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 new world for me but it was very relevant for me to to know what's happening, what they were doing, and how, how, how I could discriminate from, from that. So that could also be uh, somewhat of an inspiration for you. Think of how you can be, can get in really involved, be a part of the, of the world with the concept that you're in. If it's, if it's insects or if it's, um, if it's man meat, I saw some, some nice sentences also on man meat, or, or if it's on algae or, or pulses, obviously there's within every uh, sector there are um, other uh, companies active and it's, it's quite very relevant for you to be involved in order to also uh, see where, how you can discriminate. Um, what, what, all, what also helps is that, uh, is that when you, uh, at least in my experience, when you, when you don't build a wall around your innovation but when you, uh, you place it basically on, 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 the, on, the, on the street is that people are starting to do things with it that you couldn't have imagined before. We, we were at one moment very surprised when this uh, uh, model, um, during the premiere of a musical called Zorro, wore this dress. And this, this, this dress was, a, was inspired by the neat dress of Lady Gaga. But, uh, but when we looked at this, first we looked at the, the great model, but then we looked at the dress. <laughs> and we thought, hey, we recognize this product. And in fact, it was it was it was our product, it was our base product. <laughs> yeah. So this was this was the, this was the meatless, the meat-free dress, which she 
and then we, we really went to an auction and we had to purchase this particular dress and it, I think still it's stink in the, in, still in the factory in Ochten, which is not too far away uh, uh, from here um, some kind in, in, in a museum so, but it really helped us to get again attention in a, in a way creative, in a creative way of exposing that we could <coughs> never have uh, thought of ourselves so, so I think it's very good also to to give your ingredients, your products, your concepts also to, to others and let them let them also explore with it what they can do with it, how they can help you. And then all of a sudden, um, a few years back there was uh, sorry it's in Dutch but I'll translate this is this is from the and I really have to see if I can find my bag. I think it's it's here. Yeah. <laughs> This, the, uh, some of you may know the, the, the Quest. It's, it's a magazine, quite quite popular, and it says uh, it, it was published uh, in 2014. Uh, the 10 best inventions of this this century so, so far, so far. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and let me see, because I'm, uh, yeah, it still uh, still surprises me what, what happened. Because on, on two there was the iPhone. And on four, the Large Hadron Collider, and, 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 and on, on six, the Tesla Roadster, and on seven, YouTube. <laughs> and just between the iPhone and the Large Hadron Collider, collider was, was Beta, that, that was the name that I created for them. And I thought, what the yeah. <laughs> How did that happen? So I called the, I called the editor. Because I really didn't know. I said, How did we end up between the iPhone and the large hydro coming? And he said, Well, you know, first of all, um, um, you have a product that, 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 that's very tasteful and can really change the world, but you also are doing it a different way. We had chosen not to be so very visible, we had chosen to make Jaap visible. Or some of you may have heard about Mark Kulstum from the Dutch Wheat Burger. Um, uh, and he, but, but this, this editor really did his job. And we know you, 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 you are behind this. So I, and we really like your business model in that sense that you don't protect it. You don't build a, a wall around it. You make others to profit from it and to reach out to as many as people as possible. So uh, that's also why I, I, I'm proud of it, of course. But I want to show it also to you because, again, I think it's, it's a way of rethinking also your your business model. Um, and fortunate, fortunate, I found over the past 10 years that there are actually quite a lot of people like Ja, or, or like this Mark Kulstom, this, this founder from, from the Dutch Wheat Burger. Yeah, and they're in, they're in many countries. And, um, well, you may know this guy. No. <laughs> Uh, he is, he's also heavily investing now in uh, new protein products um, and it's um, but, but these all are um, over average motivated individuals that are rethinking proteins and um, it's, 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 it's your I think you're the next generation of, of, of these people and it's also very crucial for you that you try and uh, Contact, contact, connect with, with them. And for example, this, this is Bert. And this is now the, uh, the, the category manager, vegetarian uh, at Albert Heijn. And um, th these, these people are also very, very important because if, if they are doing their job well, they are also not, not just trying to get new products in their shell, but they're also intrinsically motivated to make a change. And people like, like, like Bert are also very relevant for you. So make sure that you also get, you find out who, who, who to talk to and who is, really, who is really intrinsically motivated to make a change together with you. <coughs> Concluding almost, I just sh I showed a picture of me running. This is also me. This is me in numbers. I was, I was quite confronted with it uh, about uh, five years ago when Oja was really growing rapidly. It was really moving from a startup to a, to a grown-up. And um, I started to feel 
different. And um, I had the opportunity to uh, to be studied, so to say, and uh, and this came out, and it, it turned out that uh, let, let's see, it's pre-start, pioneer, uh, growth, rationalization, and transformation. These are some. This is one way of describing the uh, the chain of of stages that you're going through when you're starting a company. And, and it turned out that, that I'm, I'm a pioneer and I'm a transformator. But I'm not so much appropriate for rationalization or, 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 or turning a, uh, facilitating the growth in a company. And that also uh, opened my, my view that, that I was no longer of value to this particular company. And I, so, so I, uh, I stepped out. I stepped out and I started doing different things also. Uh, in the area of, uh, of plant proteins, um, but this is this is also very relevant that that you you may be the appropriate person at the stage of the company or at the idea that you're now. It's likely that there will be a moment if you're successful that it's better that others uh, team up with with your company and that you take another role within. Uh, hopefully within the same team. So so getting to know yourself is also quite a rethinking. Uh, a process that I've experienced myself and I want to share it with you. So, um, I've, I've learned myself how, import, uh, how important it is to, and how difficult it also is, but how, how much joy it also gave me to, to make a sustainable business out of sustainable business. Remember, remember this, this picture that I, that I showed? Of course, some of you will have noticed it was the product that, that we produced at, at Oja, so it wasn't wasn't real chicken. Um, and this is a, a, a publication uh, last year where it says that Carry Carry Ingredients, quite a, quite a large uh, company, I can tell you, uh, acquired also a part of uh, or a big part of Oja. And the headline was that they bet big. Well, I think they're not betting big; they're simply betting right. Uh, and uh, we all know the examples of, uh, of, of other companies, uh, especially from, from the United States, we all know the, the examples, but here in Europe, fortunately, similar things are happening. And there are also some people here in this crowd, also for the companies, from the companies that, that know that, that there's a big change in the, in the, in the protein market happening, and that also big companies are now claiming their share of uh, what, what the protein revolution has to offer, and uh, and yeah, Ja, with his vegetarian butcher, was taken over just uh, last month uh, by uh, by Unilever, and it shows also uh, that's my interpretation that also the big companies are also looking for faces basically for for believability for credibility also, and, and that's something that for example Ja can can offer to to Unilever. And I'm, I'm quite sure that we need many more of those faces uh, over the past uh, uh, 10 to 20 years. And I hope that, that will be you. So at the end, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. This is not the most charming picture, but it's, <laughs> it's, about, it's about the uh, it's a few selfies that I took over the past uh, few weeks uh, or months. This is a slogan stating, plants are the new cows from, uh, from Basel. Upfields, which, Upfield, which is a spin-off of, uh, of Unilever, <coughs> but a daring, quite a daring uh, campaign. Um, but it, it, it also is a sign of how the how the protein games are is, is changing. This is another one at, at IKEA, where uh, where the veggie dog is now cheaper than the uh, than the meat, uh, mm -hmm. the, the conventional uh, hot dog. Uh, also making big progress there. Um, this is from uh, from Oatly. It's milk, but made uh, but made for for, for humans. Uh, <laughs> humans, yeah. And uh, and last but not least, uh, this is my daughter, who uh, finally got to go to the McDonald's because she heard that there was a also a, a veggie a veggie McChicken introduced. And this is, these are these are very um, unmissable signs that. Um, we are now in the acceleration of restoring the protein balance and uh, we can do a lot more because it's still going quite slow so we, I encourage you uh, be a part of the changing protein game 
and uh, take a bite and don't 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 dare to 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 let loose. And um, I'm I'm really hoping that you will not just take up the challenge now in submitting a proposal, but hopefully also translate it to actually a real product which is going to be on the market in perhaps one or two years' time. Who dares to say? Thank you so much for your attention. <laughs> this is what will happen. This is what, this is what will happen to you. Many of the ideas that you have, you confront <laughs> them to other people, they will say, not going to happen. No, no, no. For, forget it. You don't do something useful. First is ridicule, then it's opposed, and third is accepted as being self evident. And we can only reach that with all of you together. Thank you so much for your attention. Okay, some questions, remarks for me. Suggestions, how are you going to change the protein? How are you going to change the protein again? Did I ask a question? No, 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 no. you have your own question. Stand up. Oh, yes. Um, Daniel, I'm part of the team Eat Meat Preserve Seat. Um, I was wondering, the person you imagined was a woman, Isabel, uh, but the men are more keen protein consumers, I imagine. So why not imagine the men uh, at part of the equation? Yeah. Are, are they not the prime part of the equation? Yes, they are. But uh, to my understanding, at least at that time, and still a little bit now, is that still um, many of what men eat is determined by one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is it very bad or is it really old fashioned? <laughs> that was my that was my uh, that was my uh, reason to, to visualize. We were aiming at uh, supermarket portiers with our proposition, and we, we, did a, we did a study and we found that uh, at that time, the numbers may have changed, but it was the majority, uh, still the woman, buying the food for the whole family, including the men. And, uh, but it is, it, it, it's, if, if you choose, if you make other choices, and if you choose for other outlets or meat, take it. Eat meat, reserve a seat. Eat meat, reserve a seat. Yeah, uh, I really like that, by the way. Uh, so you're aiming at out of home, uh, probably. Yeah, but you may, may, may have different uh, opinions. By the way, I, I, was, I was inspired by, uh, by something <coughs> I heard a few weeks ago uh, with, with what you said, that was uh, carnivore, tell me more. <laughs> it's the English, it's the English <laughs> version, yeah. So, uh, carnivore, tell me more. So, turning it really around, just like you are. So, if, if you want meat, or if you're a carnivore, okay, then we, we, we can arrange something. Yeah, it, 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 instead of... Change the norm. Yeah, change, change the norm, the new normal. Very happy to, to have you here, because you're... Uh, I, I noticed that many of the challenges are about ingredients and products, but this is a concept, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, very, a social principle. Yeah, very interesting. Very good. Good job. I hope that answers your question. Yes. More. <coughs> Please stand up. Um, my name is Sarah, and, and I'm uh, participating as a coach. And my question was: um, Normally, you're also very focused on healthy diet, uh, and the transition to like different types of meat is is like in the first place also for health reasons, but then also this concept <coughs> like. The chicken and the McDonald's and, and vegetarian and vegan fast foods are increasing now, but perhaps they don't contribute to like, the overall protein diet? Yeah, um, that's an interesting question. And uh, what, I, what, I, what I always say to do these kinds of questions is that you have to differentiate between the, the overall goal that we have and the individual goal. Uh, if, and I had a discussion earlier also with, uh, with the journalist here present that I think. It's, it's all a matter of where, where you're coming from and, and where you're going to. Yeah? Uh, if, 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 if we could reach out via McDonald's, reaching out to people for which it's quite, it's quite normal to, to go to the McDonald's every once a week and ordering um, chicken or burgers or the Biz Macs and they, they 
are now ordering more vegetarian chicken burgers, I think it's, 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 a, good, it's a good step. Um, can it be better? Can it be more sustainable? Can it be more healthy? Yes. Yes. But we have to be very careful uh, in, in not, not to make the jumps too, too big. Because neophobia, in fact, there has been a, a, a person about 10 years t uh, back, uh, what was her name? I think Anna, she, she got a promotion here from Wageningen and uh, about the acceptance of meat analogues and she said that the one most critical uh, pitfall is neophobia or the fear for, for new and that's also one of the reasons I think that you see that many of these products are also really mimicking what we are used to uh, because simply because uh, the, the, again the step would be too, too big for some of us uh, to, to, to jump out of this meat mountain just in, in, at once. Hi, I'm Fabiola from the Swap Team, Silkworm as Protein. And I spent my last semester in China and I lived with a host family, Chinese host family. And what, uh, what I experienced there was huge amount of meat in the morning, in noon, in night, like meat three times a day, no meal without meat. And I'm, as a, like, as a flexitarian, I was really like a bit shocked by this. And when I told them, like back in Germany where I'm from, or in Europe in general, there's a, it's pretty fashionable not to eat that much meat and reduce your meat consumption. They couldn't believe it. So do you think you could also approach China with your meat alternatives? Uh, well, first of all, I think in, Asi in Asian countries, uh, there are uh, as, at least as, as good as meat successors that, that we have as we have here. Uh, we should not pretend that, that we're making the best in the world. I think there are also very good ones also in, in Asian countries already. And um, yeah, so I, I would prefer to not to, to let's say, we, we could export the, the knowledge, the, the technology, but, but I don't think we should export the physical products themselves. So preferably, of course, we would like to, to use as regional as sourcing sources as possible. But I think we have we are obliged also as as uh, as Western Europeans having experience uh, you know, what can happen if you, if you if you if you give up to this this meat addiction if you if you if you if you, um, uh, if you go on with that then uh, we should we should also share what we have encountered and uh, to, to those regions and, and basically um, um, how do you say it to, to, to prevent it from, from happening there as well to give them a, a sign of a warning and also to help them with perhaps with technologies or products um, so so that's more I, I think the, the export of knowledge than perhaps this, the, the products themselves yeah. <coughs> yeah. Perhaps a final. Yeah, one final. Yes. Hi, I'm uh, Emily. I also participate in the American team. I was just wondering, like, within your field of experience, besides the uh, neophobia, what have you discovered to be the most, um, how do you say it, the thing, the thing that um, hinders you the most from uh, maybe within Europe, maybe within the Netherlands, uh, because. In a sense, yeah, you can see that the people are not maybe ready for a lot of change, but it's not just the people, it's the companies and, and how we are educated on food, uh, our culture. So besides the neophobia, what else is something that is really a pitiful experience? Yeah, well, I think the most important thing is that, um, that, that, that in most cases, most cases, um, we are not representative. You, you might not. I'm not saying I don't know your, your concept, but it might just be that you are not representative <coughs> for the target group that you want to aim for. Yeah. So uh, it's very tempting to send out a message that you fully believe in, and it's very logical for you, well, and that it has to do with with health and sustainability, or or reducing water uh, use, for example. But, but for the, the people that you're, that you're aiming at, it's, 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 totally, yeah, yeah. It's, it's too far away. So, yeah. I, and that's very tempting because it's very, 
uh, so logical for, for you and, and for me. Yeah, that's why I'm asking this because I'm trying to kind of um, understand the psychology behind it. Yeah. To understand um, what are what you're dealing with because you're comparing two different worlds. If you want something that is completely different, um, but also the the chain where it's coming from. Like what I said with the educational need. Uh, that do we have to start with our school, or is our school uh, influenced more by companies? Like yeah. my question is kind of like, who is? Well, it all it kind of like the chicken and the egg story. Yeah, yeah, but it, it all depends on, of course, uh, what region you're aiming at, how are the cultural, what are the cultural habits, uh, how easy or difficult is it to uh, to get into the education system? For example, in Belgium. It's, it's people are used to uh, at schools to eat uh, hot lunches, whereas in the Netherlands it's it's not. So, and uh, let, just let me say this to you: a, a good product doesn't sell itself. Yeah. So you really need so much more than just a good product. It's it's also with uh, we, we talk a lot about insects also in the Western world, uh, uh, and uh, there have been, been quite some introductions in in the supermarket in the Dutch supermarkets over the past few years. And they all failed, and to my opinion, not not per se because the quality was not good, but because of the because of the perception. So there is, uh, and, and so, it, and it's very it's, it's a big shame for those also uh, for those people who developed those products, and because they really believed in it, and the, the products were qualitatively okay, they they were good, but still it was not successful. So I also saw that there's, there are some insect <coughs> propositions also within this. A challenge, which I think is is good. Uh, once again, the power of versatility, but we should really also learn from from those kinds of, of experiences over the past in, uh, in the Netherlands and other countries. One final question, perhaps? Short time, it's fine. Short question? Yes. What are you doing with the protein cluster? Yeah, I didn't tell you about that because I think, thought this was much more interesting. <laughs> if you want to learn more about the protein cluster, you can read about it on, on this leaflet. Well, basically, what we're doing with the protein cluster is uh, acknowledging the power that small and medium-sized enterprises have in the area of rethinking proteins. With their uh, experience in, in uh, um, um, production, uh, scaling up facilities, uh, experience also with, with, with retail. I think we should more use more the, the, the power and the connecting network of SMEs. And now we are also building a second um, uh, layer around that also for uh, for bigger companies that, uh, that may also contribute from everything that small and medium sized enterprises in this area have to offer. So it could even be interesting also for you. But uh, go and read the <coughs> All right, uh, thank you very much, Ruben. Uh, give a big hand to you. All right, so uh, I think that was quite interesting. Uh, for now, we have uh, one more presentation from uh, Jan Rademacher. Uh, Jan will shortly uh, be introducing you to, uh, to the business model canvas. Uh, you get a sense of what is the student you're actually going to fill out, uh, and as a company, you're also going to see what the students will come up with over the first year. Um, and after this, we'll have a short break, and then we'll go meet everyone. Okay. Um, uh, um, uh, well, for organization, thank you for, uh, for having here. Um, uh, you only thank you for starting off with such an inspirational presentation. It was a great year. Um, I hope I can get compliment you somewhere. I don't know if I can get the full rationale in there, because I think the topic where we talk about is also about a lot about passion and emotion. And things like, like that, but I think we made a great start here. Yes. Again, I can stand on your shoulders and try to look a little bit clearer. Um, it's uh, up from Topstein. Uh, uh, ten years ago, um, uh, one of our founders um, uh, was at the Free Medical Center 
and he uh, was not pleased to do the challenge, but like a major. And in that was the business plan of the company, which is now 10 years old. Um, and we have over 30 um, uh, uh, people like you guys. Um, enthusiastic, highly educated, um, passionate about, um, uh, in our case, doing a strategic advice uh, to, uh, to companies, big guys and, um, uh, and, and small ones. Um, uh, it's, uh, as Jeroen said, starting up a business is something else as maintaining um, uh, uh, a sustainable, dur durable uh, company. So, as you can see here, it's top start is since um, uh, this fall a PO life science uh, company, and that means that. Um, this is part of the company which is with over 200 people um, uh, throughout Europe now. So uh, it's, um, uh, when you're successful, often you merge with somebody who's more successful. Um, uh, that's an interesting thing. Competition for joining. Um, uh, I spoke a little bit with Julia uh, about that just before this, uh, this meeting, so it's, uh, it's nice that that comes back. And, and, uh, I have a couple of slides more about COM because it's also an uh, example of things we can, uh, can encounter. Um, uh, first of all, we as company, we also have a, 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 a mission to really to transform the life sciences with impactful in, in innovations. Uh, you will use, I think, also the word impact a couple of times. Um, uh, and we, we merge our competitiveness with also that of you guys, and we are passionate, and we use proven methods, and one of the proven methods I'll show you a little bit more on. Um, uh, our services, they um, uh, are essentially uh, strategy and financing, and that over the whole span of what you can think of, and of course with today we we'll talked a bit about um, uh, uh, strategy. Um, within that, you can recognize several phases and um, again I was thinking uh, I was looking quickly at the rooms uh, phases I think you can find them here as well part of those uh, those phases and today um, uh, we are in this phase okay? in, the, in the ideation and getting it a, a step further uh, but it's you have a life cycles of products and you have life cycles of companies and we like to think that big so we can um, uh, better uh, support getting an, uh, an impact. Um, uh, today, uh, today we are um, uh, starting with your, your brilliant ideas. I love it, Martha. I don't know if you put it there, but you have a brilliant idea. Great. You have a brilliant idea. Great. But then, um, uh, yeah, not there. Um, I don't know. We'll see. It's a journey. I can accompany you guys a little bit on that, uh, on that journey. And um, I'll um, uh, uh, support you with some, uh, some workshops on that. Um, uh, uh, it's your idea. And you might have a couple of different goals. Who wants to win the challenge? Excellent, about half of it. <laughs> that's good. About 10% uh, um, uh, of you will be uh, probably will be aware. Because yeah. yeah? mm -hmm. we have uh, uh, two categories, three winners each. So six out of 60, over 10% of is aware. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, so remember it, which of the ones will be the winners. Uh, but at least, hey, it, it, it usually doesn't, isn't bad to want to be aware. Um, uh, who wants to start a company? Two. Three, four, sorry. Um, uh, who wants to create impact? <laughs> oh, there's, there's nobody who says that. Well, I just like the, I do it for myself. Um, uh, um, if you like to win the challenge, you've got some help. Yeah? 
with where will we look at economic viability, the environmental sustainability, and the social impact. And well, that it, it's technical feasible, that's nice as well. So, um, uh, we are not delivering any product at the end of the, of, of the journey, so, but it's plan, it's an idea still, eh? but it's, it's more well thought, even more well thought than we are here today, and it's looked upon from all kinds of, uh, of different um, uh, sides. Um, uh, that's what we're going to do. Um, who was going to, uh, to start a business? A less now? <laughs> now, if you want to uh, to start a business, uh, usually it means you have to make money. It doesn't mean that you have to make profit. That's what you can choose for, or not. But um, uh, and just as a way of thinking, to start already a bit going to the, to the business model campus and, and value propositions. Um, uh, you can sell coffee in many different ways. You can sell protein in many different ways. Um, uh, it's all coffee. Mm -hmm. But the amount mm -hmm. of turnover which you can create with it is very different. And what you have to do is also very different. Because uh, here you can just pick the berries, here you have to burn them, and here you have to grind them, and here you have to find the really good cool, taste of so you add value to it. And here, you even have to extract the beans or do a lot of advertisement, create a brand and a movement around it. So this is, this is an example which can help you in thinking through how can I position my product? How can I position my idea? Um, You can start with MTC then. It can be very intimidating. So um, uh, that is said, this is all well known. You can uh, find everything on the on, on the website, and it's there, and it can help you greatly. Uh, who used the model, uh, business model campus? Okay, quite a bit. So um, uh, I hope I can still add something to the to what you you experienced. And the other ones uh, can invite you to get introduced uh, to it. What is it? It's, um, uh, it's uh, you can say it in different ways, but it's, it's yeah, you could see it as looking through all kinds of angles of what could be your business. And um, uh, it's, uh, um, I'm not going to, to talk you through the, 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 the um, business model campus uh, today. Because it would be, would be very boring, and um, uh, it's it's and it's much more easier and nice to, to take a little part of it and just use that for today and the coming weeks, and then elaborate to the next steps of the business. So not this one, but when you make it want to make it simpler, it becomes more complicated first. Because Martha said. We have a three leg. We have the economic <coughs> viability, the environmental sustainability, and the social impact. So you have the profit, the planet, and the people. And the practice we can make the fourth leg, but that's a part of the economic life. What's the idea? Well, it's how we. we, we um, we had a quite inspirational talk start, and I felt it triggered already several people. Hey, we have people with a mission. Well, Wageningen also has a mission, and many of you guys have similar kind of vision. But what you do also has an impact on the environment and has an impact on the people, and you want to have that positive impact. So if you start with the end in mind, you can start making those uh, uh, different uh, 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 properties which you find in the, in the business model campus um, uh, coherently connected because some of them might be, have contrary effect 
you know eh? if you if you want to be um, um, uh, uh, environmental friendly um, uh, and use little land to make your crop uh, but you want to have it also organic that's often uh, difficult because organic often uses more land so uh, there's which of the two how are you going to optimize it you always need a balance uh, there's always a trade-off somewhere and um, uh, starting with this tri-dimensional business model uh, campus um, uh, keeps that in mind that you uh, uh, take care of the, the right topics in your trade-offs um, um, uh, I have uh, <coughs> the assumption that uh, you will be uh, questioned about that I think uh, this is important in your plan to have to, to have argumentative balances. Um, the economic um, business model canvas, the uh, uh, classical, uh, it's, the, uh, it's the one I showed before, but this one is out of the paper with, um, uh, with the, uh, the three fees. Um, uh, again, I said I, I won't go through the, through the whole thing today, but I, uh, it's not or nothing, I think that it's in the <coughs> real start today with the value proposition. Because hey, when you have an idea and you want to spread it, there should some value on it for some people. <coughs> um, um, this is uh, the similar model. It had a next layer that's um, um, uh, the environmental business model. So these, um, uh, what you see here is just um, uh, uh, numbers and icon of, uh, words and icons on it. These things are also there with, with questions which can help you. So you can help you through looking at the different ways. So but, um, uh, here you should get your environmental impact and your benefits, your trade-offs, your balances. You should get out of here of environmental impact and this should help you to see the social effect of your, your ideas. And um, uh, so you fill in the, the, uh, the squares and then you're done. No, because it's, uh, they, they, should, um, uh, uh, they, they should be uh, coherently connected with each other because each uh, piece has an effect on another one. And, and so you have to, to balance the whole puzzle. That's the challenge. Um, uh, so I said, let's start with the um, uh, with the value proposition. Anybody made a value proposition? Yeah, the people. Some of the people who do the business model campus. It's difficult because you have to torture yourself a bit. And it's um, and what's really in it. And the, the, the product, the service. That's that's the idea. That's the, the product what you um, uh, what you um, uh, want uh, to sell or to spread. Or, uh, and um, uh, what helps you to to um, have to to, have to carve your product? Uh, because the, uh, uh, you might think I've got an idea. Thus I have a product. Usually you have to go through the whole process and then you know in the end what really was your product or what was the most feasible product to sell or to, um, uh, or to economically uh, produce or spread. Um, uh, two things um, uh, are important for products we call the pain relievers and gain creators. What uh, it's uh, it's uh, those are two sides of a product. So, uh, making something positive more positive, making something negative less negative. Um, uh, so the product is what is provided, and um, that's what I just said. Uh, and you can think that for a product for yourself, yeah, as a consumer, what would it bring me? But if you look at what would it bring the planet, the, the planet might be something very different. Um, if you think about it, uh, what world does it uh, associate with? It might be very, very different. Then it's um, 
when I buy a fair trade product, it's often a little bit more expensive. So for me personally, it's, I got less, I got less value if I look at the price and the product that I have. If I think about the people who produce it, and if they get a fair uh, amount of money for their products, then my pain is relieved, then I pay a little bit more, and I know that the guys who picked the, 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 the cacao um, uh, uh, from the trees, that they also got nice wages. So then I, my, my pain is relieved, because I know there's a lot of people who work for a little money. Um, uh, for somebody it's a pain reliever, for somebody else it's a game creator. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm eating chocolate anyhow because I like it a lot. But now I can be happy to eat chocolate, you know? So it can be one thing. Yeah, but happy to eat chocolate anyhow. All the good examples, sorry. Um, uh, so it, it, even the same reason, the same argument, can for different people or different groups of people have a different spot in the business model campus. Um, uh, so it's it's okay, it's it's it, you should really do this iteratively and yeah, extending it with with with, uh, with with the next part and then go back to it again. So you really know what you are doing and um, at some point say okay, now I start to know what the group is I want to sell to because uh, it's when it's different for different people then. I might just want to sell to the doctors and not to the other ones. Um, because it's, uh, this is too simple, but it's hard to fill in. There are all kinds of helps there. The whole internet is full of helps, and you know it better than I do, probably. But, um, uh, so, you have those trigger questions. They can help you. And they can, and you just can grow through them and scrutinize them and be, uh, and be tough on yourself. Because it's, um, uh, if it would have been easy, probably somebody else would have done it already. So, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, In order to get really to the um, uh, to the social and to the, uh, the environmental impact, you, know, you, you usually have to zoom out. You know, it's um, uh, I think at the end of yours uh, the uh, presentation was also like it. it's it's what I translate as it's easy to know the truth on a, on a square centimeter. You know. Because the smaller it gets, the, 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 there's only one truth. But in the world, there are many truths. Yeah? And it's just how you look at it. It's, uh, today, my daughter is giving a presentation um, uh, about a song, and it's called Mooi. She chose Mooi because she really liked it from Marco Pusato. Um, uh, half of you probably knows it. Um, and, uh, it's about how you look at life. You can make it yourself nice or not. And she's probably talking about it at the same time as, uh, as I do now. And uh, the fun is, I have to tell you guys also that some people might look at it differently as you guys do. Nobody of us, especially not me, knows the real truth because it's just not there. Um, uh, nevertheless, if you want to look at the, at the, 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 uh, the planet um, uh, sustainability uh, goals and, uh, uh, and the social goals, make your world bigger. See what's happening out there. Uh, it's, um, uh, it's also where uh, you can have a mission, but you, uh, there's also something like a vision. How do you see the world around you? And how does that interact with your, um, uh, with your idea?
making it bigger. So if you have the uh, value proposition here, that we started on, you already think, start thinking about the customer in mind, because that's the next thing. What's the customer? The customer, that's the one who's having the pain or having the gain. And if you want to, and yeah, it was beautiful uh, example. Uh, and if you want to 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 to, uh, to change the way specific proteins uh, impact the world, um, uh, do you want to sell that ID to persons directly? Do you want to change their habits directly? Uh, do you want uh, to sell them products directly? Or do you have intermediates? Uh, is it? Uh, is it, uh, should you be happy that the uh, giants like, like, like Unilever and, uh, and Albert Heijn take your ideas? Or should you be, um, uh, 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 should you feel bad about it? Um, uh, well, it might make life much easier when you sell something to, uh, uh, to, to a representative of a larger group. If you get your ID to uh, have a big um, uh, uh, company, so it, might, uh, it might make your life much easier and you might be able to spread your ideas <coughs> much further. So uh, it's, um, uh, that's, that's a trade-off. But uh, what you, when you look at your uh, value proposition, and you can uh, steadily also determine what is, what is your, 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 your client image. Is that that 30 uh, year old lady, or is it a group? Is it are the visitors of a restaurant? Um, are uh, the people from a certain country? Just have a look at, um, uh, at, at that, and then again, um, take, uh, uh, take the two <coughs> additional dimensions um, uh, very serious uh, about it as well. And again, you have the, uh, the trigger question. Um, uh, I hope I'm not so boring, but I, I heard that students these days really go to college and, <laughs> and, 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 and make their homework and stuff like that. So I'm proud of the guys who are, are going and even more proud of you guys because you already probably did it. Um, uh, so there are three things in your way to, uh, to win the challenge. Huh? So it's very simple. Just one, two, three, and you are price winners in June. So first, winning a sustainable business idea, starting with uh, with the with, with value proposition, which uh, can help you a lot. Um, and then you go to the next step. Have a winning 3P uh, business plan, and uh, I put you already a little bit on the track what the 3Ps are, so you can start uh, working on that already. And then just spinning a pitch. So, are you ready? Okay. Yes. <laughs> I feel the energy. Uh, uh, I'll be there with a couple of tips and tricks um, uh, as well with uh, with some other workshops. And oh, this sounds looks a little bit uh, weird, but um, uh, just to to end up with a couple of remarks. Uh, <coughs> Have people planet and profit, it's like uh, apples and pears, they have an apple, or in good English to, uh, to compare apples and oranges. So um, uh, they have different kinds of value. So the trade-offs is something which you think fits. And you cannot optimize, you cannot, you cannot optimize for everything. So there are always trade-offs. Um, uh, in order where you want to put the trade off, um, uh, it really helps to determine and rank the most important or key or critical assumptions. Your assume, what do you assume about your product? It's not something what you know, it's not something what I know, definitely not, um, uh, but it's something that you uh, assume. Try to validate those, uh, uh, those most important uh, assumptions. And start right away. Uh, it's, um, uh, Oh, what do you think of my idea? 
of your approaches. Uh, you can hear, you can ask that. Well, very interesting idea. Uh, I will try to get back to you as soon as possible with a question and say, okay, but uh, what do you think is the core of your idea? What do you think? Um, uh, where do you feel uncertain about it? I would go to something, something else. So um, uh, it's uh, uh, take, take also positions and ask more specific questions. Yeah, so you can get feedback on something specific. If you ask a big question, you get a big answer back and you're going on. Okay, I still don't know where I'm going. Um, um, challenge yourself. Iterate and have an attitude. <coughs> Just have an attitude. Yeah? And uh, <coughs> uh, that doesn't mean you get one attitude specifically, but it, it means that you can be headstrong, you can also be open minded. And you would also say, well, if, if, you, if you flow with all the winds, you know, I don't know that in this expression, but <laughs> um, uh, then, uh, then you, you, you might end up nowhere. And you have to take your own track and be headstrong about it, but that would just be in time, get to uh, have the knowledge, the value of, of the people around you. Um, uh, and um, uh, uh, get feedback, uh, reflect, learn. learn. And improve, and you have a great um, uh, ecosystem uh, around you in which you can uh, work it out uh, today and the coming months. So I say success, still success. <laughs>